Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we will be painting Colossus from Marvel Crisis Protocol. As a kid, X-Men comics were one of my favorites and Colossus was one of my favorite characters who doesn't like a dude who can turn his body into living metal, right? So I thought it's just fitting to start with him and have him as my first painted Crisis Protocol model. Coming from a Warhammer background in miniatures, I was a bit afraid that the quality of the models would be inferior, but that is not the case at all. The sculpts are beautiful and the details are super crisp, and my favorite Russian mutant was a joy to paint. For most of the Crisis Protocol models, I am not a huge fan of the box art, but I felt that in this case it was actually quite good. However, I wanted to change a few things. First of all, the clothes seemed a bit too shiny. They looked too similar to the metal surfaces for my liking. That's an easy fix though, I can simply highlight them a bit less. I also dislike the way the face was painted. I can't really say why, but somehow that is true for most Crisis Protocol box art. I wasn't sure how I would fix it at that point, but I wanted it to be different somehow, that was sure. Finally, I decided that I would not add the OSL effect coming from the palm gun of the Sentinel arm because it looked a bit muddy on the box art, and I wasn't sure I could do a better job, plus that arm was not attached to any power source, so how can it function and give out light, right? I will just use that as my excuse. Alright, that's enough chit chat, let's start painting. I'm starting the process with the most prominent feature of the model, the metallic body parts. You can simply paint them with normal metallic colors, wash them to establish contrast and then reapply some of the highlights, but it won't look nearly as contrasty and striking as non-metallic metal would, so non-metallic metal it is. I recently got an AK Interactive non-metallic metal set for myself and I wanted to try it out anyway, so this was just a perfect opportunity. I followed my usual process, highlighting up from black with lighter and lighter colors, occasionally going back and smoothing out the transitions with some thin glazes of the highlight color. I didn't do the non-metallic metal 0 to 100 without starting with the other colors though. This might be personal preference, but I like to see the context of what I am working on. Contrast is everything when painting non-metallic metal, but since this is a cartoon character, I tried to push the contrast even more than usual. I went back multiple times to re-establish the black lines between the segments, which really helped make him look more defined and cartoonish at the same time.
Once I was done with the metal parts, I started painting the red cloth elements, mostly with Citadel paints because their reds are just fantastic. I used the sketching style to establish the highlights and I was planning to smooth it out later but ended up liking it as it was so I just left it as is. I didn't push the highlights too much so it doesn't overpower the non-metallic metal. The yellow parts can be difficult to paint but the trick is to establish a brown base coat and highlight up from there. If you try to go yellow from black you will get frustrated and the paint job will get messy.
during the whole process I was going back and forth making small corrections to the other colors while mostly concentrating on one area with my main color. Having all the previous colors available on my web palette helps a lot. Once I decided that I was done with the figure itself, I started working on the base. The interesting thing here are the sentinel body parts, the head and the torn off arm, mostly because I already have a sentinel primed and ready to be painted, so this was a great opportunity to figure out the scheme. The blue was super straightforward since I used my standard blue armor recipe with Prussian blues combined with ice yellow. The purple was trickier. In the end I used Vallejo purples with ice yellow again for consistency and to keep the colors warm like in the box art. I wanted to make sure that these sentinel parts are not as nicely highlighted as the main figure so he can be the highlight of the paint job and these elements are there to frame him. I quite like the end result to be honest. I could have probably smoothed out the non-metallic metal elements a little bit more, but for the time I invested I think they look pretty good. Which is your favorite Crisis Protocol character and how do you like to paint them? With contrast paint, speed painting them or normal paints painstakingly doing non-metallic metals? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed the content and subscribe if you want to see more. See you in the next one.